let's take a few minutes to think about the linkages between the budget line and indifference curves to find a point of consumer equilibrium. This is part of the theory of demand. In our example, a customer faces a simple choice between consuming sausages and chicken wings. Now, IC2 is an indifference curve, but combinations on that curve, uh, the consumer is indifferent between them. It's convex to the origin because of diminishing marginal utility. But the consumer can't reach IC1 because the budget line, determined by incomes and prices, doesn't allow them to reach any of those combinations shown. So IC1 lies beyond the consumer's feasible set of consumption possibilities. They could reach many of the combinations along IC2. Don't forget, IC2 gives you a lower total level of satisfaction. But most of those combinations lie within the budget line. So you're not using up all of your income. And we're assuming here that saving money and not spending carries no utility. You're only facing a choice between sausages and chicken wings. So the equilibrium, the equilibrium position will be here. Equilibrium in this theory is reached at a point of tangency between the budget line BL1 and the highest attainable indifference curve, which in this case is IC3. That's the highest indifference curve the consumer can reach with the budget line in its current position, allowing them to consume A units of sausages and B units of chicken wings to maximise their satisfaction. The point of consumer equilibrium maximises total satisfaction within a given and limited budget. That's the basic idea of consumer equilibrium.